I look forward to it. You know, um, this is a, a week I always look forward to. I think I was the first one to sign up this year for the tournament. Um, you know, it was uh, it was a dream come true to win here in 2010. Um, you know, my dad was about to pass away, so uh, my dad got to see me win for the first time. Um, maybe, and at the time, he could have been the only time, but I happened to back it up a couple years later. But um, yeah, no, it's uh, it's dear to my heart. You know, coming here, the fans, the uh, the volunteers here, the the title sponsor, Travelers. Now um, they put together a great tournament, and um, I just registered. And um, you know, they give your wife a, a little gift, a little bag, and then uh, my son, they give the little kids uh, some toys as well. And so he got a little spaceship, um, but he thought it was an airplane. So he thought it was the greatest thing in the world, a little, little toy spaceship, but he called it airplane. But so it's fun, you know. When the, when the tournament does little things like that, it, it makes it uh, special for us. And I told them, I said, so I get nothing, you know. <laughs> That's how it works. <laughs> okay. Well, with that, we'll take some questions. And we have a microphone that we'll initially pass around. And if you all would just keep passing it to uh, the folks that would like to ask a question. We'll start right up here up front. Well, the tournament has talked about with this date, the week after the Open, you know, with the charter flight and with the, these little gifts. But they, they also talk about the loyalty that the players feel because when they're young, they, they do things for them. Can you talk a little bit about why players are loyal to this tournament? Well, I think um, when you when you look at this tournament, they, they do everything. The sponsor knows the date's very tough. It's very tough to get um, the all of the top players in the world. You know, you're not going to get all 50 in the, of the best here. But, um, you know, when you look at that tough date, uh, some people say tough, some people don't. But, um, you know, the little things they do, like the little toy for my son, um, the little gifts for my wife, um, just all the activities they have. You know, they have the bounce house. Um, they have the different things. They, they built the range. You know, everything they're doing in this, this uh, town, uh, everything they're doing at this golf course, everything they're doing, uh, the sponsor's doing, the sponsor signed up, I think, for, what, 10 more years now? Um, so Travelers is, is all for it. Um, they're all about trying to give back and, and also give back to the community, give back to the families that show up. But um, when you look at that, you see the hard work that, that a sponsor like that is putting in. Um, and so when they're, they're dedicated, then the, then the players are, uh, are very appreciative of that, that we uh, – that they're uh, guaranteeing us a, another chance to make money for the next 10 years. So obviously, as a player, you uh, you see those things, the small things, but they add up to uh, big things. Hopefully that helped. Bubby, you just gave your reasons why it's uh, important for you to come back. Not everyone that wins you know, every tournament is able to come back every time. And most of them do, obviously, but and there are some circumstances. But do you ever foresee any you know anything unforeseen or barring that do you, will you think you'll always be back here for this because of the reasons you just gave or do you think there is something that maybe sometime you won't be able to um no I, this one's always on the schedule you know um medical problems are different but um you know uh, i don't see that there's a reason for me not to be here um you know i, I can't I, I i can't see there's there's any reason i'm going to be here as Anytime I'm in the field, or if I need a, I need a, uh, an invite in the field, I'm gonna be asking, you know. So, uh, so I'm gonna try to be here as much as I can. So, yeah, I don't, I don't see. I would say, 100%, I, I won't miss it, unless I win a couple majors early and then just be like, hey guys, <laughs> I happen to win back-to-back -back majors. I'm gonna, should I? yeah, we know uh, that ain't happening. So, uh, Bubba, you, uh, scheduling is always such an important part of a player's success or in just coping out here. You seem to be doing a, a, a good job with that. Your family and the tour, and you've won a couple of majors. Just how is that process going for you, scheduling-wise? Well, when you look at um, when you look at um, different people's schedule, um, how they um, how they work. You know, Matt Kuchar seems like he plays a lot. Um, Jordan Spieth's real young, so he still plays a lot. Um, Tiger Woods was always limited how he played. Maybe maybe 18 to 20. Um, Steve Stricker is, is calmed it down, but still playing at a high level. Um, so for me mentally, I, I figured out that two in a row, two in a row to be my best was two in a row. And um, this playoff, this year the playoffs can be four in a row, which is awesome. Um, but you know, I um, I, I've tried to scale back. Um, or I'm trying to get to 20 events, 21 events, right in that area. Um, if I go overseas, maybe 22 events. And so. Uh, and, and the reason why is because of me personally, my, my head, you know, is trying to stay mentally prepared, have the energy level to compete at a high level each week, um, and then also have the, the uh, focus and, and drive to, to want to be a better husband and a better dad. So um, when you add that all in, it just means I'm going to have to take out some tournaments to, uh, to create the atmosphere I'm looking for, the balance in life that I'm looking for. 
Jason. There's three hands up. Everybody's so excited. I'm very big excited week, big week. Uh, Bubba, looking back at last week, uh, reading between the lines, your uh, comments beforehand might not have been your favorite course or your favorite course setup. Uh, what's your takeaway from last week uh, and what you thought of the course? Last week was was very difficult for me. Um, I um, yeah, I took away that I need to be tougher. I need to be tougher mentally. Um, I played good the second day, um, as good as I could play, and I still shot. I think it was even. Um, and there was other guys shooting under par every day. So uh, for me, it was just it was a tough week. You know, I thought Marion was very tough, but I, I thought Marion was a U.S. Open course that that I liked, um, even though I, I barely made the cut. But um, so, like I said last week, it was about I played in eight U.S. Opens. About half of them I liked, half of them I didn't like. Um, and that's just it's just how it is. You know, I, I love Hilton Head, but I'm not going to play Hilton Head because Hilton Head doesn't love me. You know, uh, golf course doesn't like the way I play golf, and so. Uh, you know, I love it, but it's just one of those things if, um, you know, it's just tough for me to, to play that golf course. And the golf course is obviously better than me last week. So, but hopefully if we ever play there again, I can, I'll beat it one day. <laughs> along, along the same lines, can you talk about the, the change of approach to coming to a place where, you know, you may need a dozen or more, you know, 20 birdies to win, whereas last week, you know, 72 pars was probably going to get it done. Do you kind of well, change it? Well, if Martin wasn't there, then it might get it done. <laughs> Martin, Martin messed it up for everybody. Um, no, I, I, yes, it's. Um, we were we were joking last week. Not that y'all want to be bored with this, but I'm gonna tell y'all anyway. So, we were joking with some friends last week because all my friends want to come in the U.S. Open and watch everybody struggle. And so, um, so we were joking about travelers. You know, we were talking. We were looking forward to travelers, and um, because I can sit here and tell you exactly what clubs I'm gonna hit for the next four days on each hole. Um, I know exactly. First hole is gonna be a wedge. Second hole wedge. Third hole wedge. These are into the, the approach shots. And then next hole is gonna be. Uh, it'll change, but eight, nine are wedge. Uh, next hole is a six iron to a five iron. Next hole is a three iron going for it and two. Next hole is a wedge. Next hole is a eight iron. Next hole is a wedge. 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 Next hole is going for it and two. Next hole is a wedge. Next hole is a wedge. Or if you drive the green, you can putt. Next hole is a nine or an eight. Um, 17 is a nine or a wedge, and 18 is a wedge. So when you look at that, why would I not want to play here if I'm hitting that many wedges? And so. Uh, <laughs> And, and, and I've got, you know, in Teddy's yardage book, um, we've got eight years, um, eight years of notes. And those are the clubs I hit. First hole is always a wedge, some kind of wedge when I say wedge. Uh, law wedge or, or sand wedge in the second hole. So, yeah, I mean, when you come here, I'm looking forward to this. And that doesn't matter if I'm in the rough or not. Those are the clubs I'm hitting. And so um, it, it comes down to me putting. If I can putt halfway decent, I have a chance to top ten here or scare a victory. And so uh, when you add those numbers, not that we want to make this course longer for anybody, but uh, – but I, for me, those are some comfortable numbers I can hit into these holes. And so getting away from the uh, U.S. Open, obviously this is a uh, – this year's different, but normally it's lighter rough. Um, there wasn't any rough last week. But um, coming off those greens, these greens are a little bit more forgiving, um, more friendly. Um, and so when you look at that, yeah, it's, it's a tough week the week before, but at the same time you know you're coming here to a, 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 a sponsorship that loves you. That are that are giving back to community, giving back to the, the the golfers here, and then a golf course that is a little bit more friendly to us as well. So, uh, so it's always fun coming back here. Okay, Bruce. Does that answer it, sorta. Of? Perfect. Yeah. I can tell you those numbers. It's a wedge, wedge. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say we all hit wedges too, but it's our third or fourth shot. <laughs> exactly. um, the two masters. Um, was there any big difference? Uh, did it mean more? Did it uh, bring you more attention, less attention? Or was it all about the same? You know, it's it's a um, it's a fine line because it meant more to me personally. I mean, for for personal satisfaction, for personal gain, yes, it, it means a lot to win as many majors as possible. Um, but this year was different. Um, the first year that I won the Masters, I. Um, it was out of my comfort zone. I felt like I wasn't good enough to win a major. Like, why did I win a major? Um, you know, all these these things go through your head. And so I wanted to just hide the jacket from everybody and just put it in my closet. Um, I didn't want to boast about it. And um, this time was uh, was about the platform I'm given. You know, there's a platform we're given on uh, playing professional sports, and it's how you use it. And, and my platform got a little bit bigger with the second win. Um, and so I went back to my schools, donated some money to my schools, um, tried to help in the small town that I grew up, try to help them and, and show them that whatever you want to do in life, you can do it, no matter where you come from. If you come from Baghdad, Florida, or if you come from a big city, if you have the, the, the drive and the dedication, you can, you can succeed in whatever it is in life. Um, it'll be tough. It won't be easy, but it'll be tough. And um, 
but you can do it. And so that's what I tried to do this time with this win. I wanted to use my platform in the right way to, to give back to charities, to help uh, inspire charities, and just help inspire some kids a little bit, golf or in education. Well, no, it was just I gave back to my elementary school. You know, I never, you know, we look at giving back to, uh, you know, cancer research. We look to giving back to um, anything for children's, for abused children. Um, well, I do. And, and so when I look back, military, when you look back at all these things, but you never, I never once dreamed about giving back to my school, my elementary school, my middle school, my high school, my college. And so when I looked at that, you know, I asked, the, I asked these schools what they wanted, what they needed. And so I gave each school uh uh, my elementary school, fifteen thousand dollars for for computers, you know, iPads for the kids. Uh, they wanted a uh, a better sign in my middle school to give back for uh, for the kid for the uh, parents to see uh, the bulletin board, basically electronic sign out front. So I gave them the money for the electronic sign, and then um, they thought that's what they needed the most. And then my high school wanted more uh, technology as well, and it's eighteen hundred kids in, in high school, so I gave them thirty five thousand dollars to. Hopefully that provides a lot of iPads and technology for them to uh, educate. And so that's what I did. It, it sounds weird saying that Bubba Watson wanted to help education, but that's what I did. <laughs> I changed it up on everybody. Yeah. Right here then, Jason. Yeah. Bubba, you talk about being on a platform and it gets bigger with more majors. How, how do you prepare to, and how are you successful connecting with the public? You draw large galleries, people, you can charm a room, uh, you charm crowds. Is it something you've, you've worked on? Is it just natural? Uh, how do you relate to the public so well? I'm just naturally awesome. Um, <laughs> see? Um, no, um, you know, it's, it's, it, it's nothing I've ever tried to do, but social media brings it out. Like, you know, a, go a golf course, a golf tournament can be very boring sometimes. You know, we get the PC answers. We get, you know, I really played good today. I just didn't make any putts. And so... You know, we can say the same answers, but for, for social media, it lets you do videos. Uh, you know, a lot of guys are funny out here, but, but on the golf course, it's hard to be funny and, and play at a high level. And so social media helped me uh, get my, uh, my mindset, my attitude out into the world. Um, but then when you, when you get to a certain level, I believe that your platform, you have to use it in the, in the right way. And so um, also, that's a, it's a double-edged sword. If you don't use social media the right way, it makes you look pretty bad. And so um, it's all about how you, you, you deal with that. And so I think the public kind of sees um, who I am, uh, who I want to be, who I want to become. Um, and we're all trying to get better in life. We're, we don't want to always be at the bottom, so we're all trying to get better. And I think the, the, uh, the, the golf fan, the average golf fan, um, sees that Bubba Watson is just having fun, having a blast, trying to hit the ball hard. You know, what what golfer out there doesn't want to hit it farther? You know, so uh, the amateur uh, the amateur side of it, they see me and they, they enjoy watching me play because I can hit shots sometimes that other people can't hit. And so, um, you know, I'm just having fun right now on the on the game of golf, but also trying to be the 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 role model for my son. So I think everybody sees that, and you know, hopefully, it grows me one or two more fans than, uh, than the average person. Jace. Well, you mentioned uh, Teddy earlier. This is kind of the one-year anniversary of down the stretch last year in the final round when uh, microphones from the cameras caught you maybe giving it to him a little bit. Um, do you guys talk about that? What do you think about that? And what's what was your reaction? Yeah, I told him I'm hitting eight iron. I hit nine iron. What was your reaction to the reaction from it? You know, I thought the reaction was, was really bad. Um, again, Teddy, I think we kind of figured it up a, a few months ago or a week ago. You know, we, we've tried to figure it up. Uh, with, the, with the story of Phil and Bones came out, you know, how long they've been together. I think uh, Furick and Fluff have been together uh, probably the second longest. And me and Teddy are going on nine years. So we've got to be top five, maybe third, somewhere in that area, uh, working together. And, and Teddy knows I love him. He knows what my heart is. He knows what my heart's all about. He knows I would never yell at him. Um, he knows that he was, he was the one that wanted me to hit that club. And I gave it to him. And I, we had that same shot again this year, and I'm going to try to do the same thing. He gave me that much, that much, uh, that much, I don't know the right word to say, but that much uh, effort, and that's what he wanted me to hit. He believed this was the right club. You're pumped up, this, this, and this, and perfect. And I thought I hit it pretty good. It drew, um, came up short. And so, and I told him afterwards, you know, all the media attention, people writing, people texting him saying how bad I am as a person. They're like, no. You know, he takes up for me a lot. I take up for him a lot. And, and um, 
we love each other, and, and I would do it again. I told him, I said, I, I have 100% confidence in you. And if you, you preach to me, this is the club again, I'm going with it. I mean, there's many times where he tells me the right club, and I just hit it terrible. That one I was posing. I thought it was really good. So when I walked over there, I, you know, I, I said it, and, and I probably did say it the wrong way. I and mean, when cameras all around us, I, um, I said, that's the club. That's the club, Teddy. Uh, and which, obviously, is not right at the time. And we all, we've all made mistakes. Probably not you guys, but I've made many mistakes. That's not my only one I've ever made. And so, um, but but Teddy, um, you know, he forgave me. Uh, you know, and I told him I, I looked like a jerk, and uh, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have done it that way. And um, in the heat of the moment, you know, we do things that we don't like. Um, I've been yelled at before in situations that I didn't like. And so, um, no, nah, we're all good. We're, um, you know, I gave him a raise trying to make him happy so he wouldn't quit. <laughs> but, no, nah, we're, we're all good. We've been together nine years. Um, obviously, he's a grown man. He's 40, uh, 41 years old. So he could quit me at any time if he didn't like what I was doing. So, yeah. But other than that, now we're going to be enemies this week because you brought that up. <laughs> Sorry, Teddy. Two questions for you, Bubba. Yes. First question, what do you think of the field in this year's Travelers Championship? I was looking at it. It was, it was pretty good. You know, when you look at some of the, uh, some of the names, some of the different names that have come in here, um, it's good. Um, and I think, um, you know, it's, uh, it, this tournament always leads to the, to the, the, the newcomer, the first-timer. Um, and, you know, some of the older guys, they're trying to make sure that that doesn't happen again. Well, I would like for my name to be back on there instead of one of these young guys. Um, and so it's... Um, it's always you have a different field all the time, but you always have a few top ten or top uh, top fifteen and twenty guys in the FedEx Cup that are here that are uh, that are trying to uh, improve their position, but also the young guys are trying to uh, get that first win. And the young guys get pumped up around here too because they see all the first timers winning around here. So I think sometimes we uh, we looked at depth of field and we forget about how great some of these young guys are going to be at some point. Eric Compton was in here speaking with us before. What do you think about his story? Oh, um, it is absolutely amazing. I was pulling for him. I was pulling for a lot of guys. I'm, I'm good friends with Martin. Martin beat me at the PGA Championship in a playoff, and so I'm mad at him still, but um, not holding any grudges. But, um, no, it's good to see Martin win. Ricky was up there. Um, and Eric. You know, I traveled in, um, at University of Georgia with Eric. We, uh, we roomed together. Um, and he used to have this pill. It's called Sand Immune. He don't take it anymore. But when he takes it out of the package, he takes about 20 pills a day. When he takes it out of the package, it stinks. It's the worst smelling thing in everybody. He used to leave it in the van. He'd take it, leave it in the van while we'd go. And so when we get back in there, we're like, Eric, what are you doing? And he'd put it under your pillow. He would do it all. And, um, and so it's the worst smelling. It's called sand immune. And so um, I don't think he doesn't take it anymore, but I'm glad. Um, so we, you know, we used to have fun with it. But when you look at Eric, I mean, what he's been able to accomplish, no matter if he, if he ever wins or not, what he's been able to accomplish to make it to the tour with uh, – with the heart issues that he's had, it's just uh, it's remarkable. And I think he can, um, with his platform, what he's doing, he's doing some great things, and he can uh, keep doing great things. And if he keeps playing well, he's going to have a bigger and bigger platform, bigger than any of us.